The reality of a sudden vacancy on the Supreme Court is the riverboat gambling that is being played with American laws. An outgoing lame duck president who may be more inclined to truly stamp his legacy with a hard left jurist and a Republican controlled Congress with heels already dug in on denying him any chance at making that happen. Both sides facing the reality of a huge defeat and the American voter actually being able to cast a ballot for the nation's highest court. Let's welcome back the professor of law at the University of Pennsylvania with a focus on constitutional law, Professor Kermit Roosevelt. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. Good to talk to you again. And before we get into the actual, some of the specifics here, is it not fair to say that although the Republicans have said, absolutely not, Mr. President, we're going to stop you at every single turn, that if the situations were reversed, wouldn't Democrats look to do the same thing? Oh, they probably would. I think everyone understands at this point there's a political, there's a partisan element to Supreme Court appointments. It matters a whole lot who you get on the court. These are people who will shape the Constitution for, for years to come. So certainly it's political. Everyone understands that. Is it fair also to say that it has happened before in an election year? So this is not uncommon, but what does history tell us that would be the right thing to do? Do it right away or wait? History tells us that usually it does get done, even in an election year. So about one in five Supreme Court justices that have actually been appointed in election years with lame duck presidents. Now, usually you don't get such a polarized country. You don't get such an evenly balanced court. There are a number of reasons why the stakes are higher this time. Okay, let's talk about those stakes here for just a moment, because there are cases that are already sitting out there, cases that have been decided, cases that were sitting in front of the Supreme Court. In your opinion, what is sitting there right now as the single most important issue or issues that will now face a Supreme Court with only eight members? Well, if you look at the cases that have already been argued, I think the one that really stands out is this case about the rights of unions to use non-member dues for political activities. Because that's a situation where it really looked like the five conservative justices were going to take a step farther than they had in earlier cases and really hamstring the ability of unions to participate in the political process, which would have had significant effects for all of our elections. It would have given conservatives a big edge. And now I think that is not going to happen. So then let's look at what they're doing here, what the Republican side has said. Delay, 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 whatever. We're simply not going to do anything. Is it smart? I mean, let, let's, as I said at the beginning, this is riverboat gambling on both sides. But is it smart in an election year? Because in effect, aren't, are you not giving the, the general public a chance to now select a president and then select a member of the Supreme Court. The American public rarely gets a chance, if ever gets a chance, to do something that impactful. Yeah, well, there are a couple things that Republicans should be thinking of. You know, one is, does it help them to make this election be about the Supreme Court? And my guess is it doesn't, actually. I think if you look at what the American public wants from the Supreme Court, probably they want more of what the Democratic appointee would give you. The other question is, suppose that the Republicans hold out and lose, Maybe they would have been happier with a moderate Obama nominee than they will be with a Clinton or Sanders far left nominee. So then let's look at that possibility here. If there are the Republicans then, in your opinion, basically not saying we're very confident that we are going to win in November and then we will have the chance to change the Supreme Court. Now, that's that's not a bad way to think if you want to go ahead and project the fact that you are confident of it. But there's a pitfall there if they lose. Oh, yes. And, you know, given the disarray that the Republican Party is in now in their primary, I think they would be delusional to think that they're in a strong position for the general election because they're a little bit out of control. You know, out in front, they've got candidates that the Republican Party establishment does not like. So maybe they can come together. Maybe they'll find a candidate everyone can rally around and go into the general election in a strong, united position. But quite possibly that's not going to happen. Now, something similar is happening on the Democratic side in that Sanders is doing much better than people thought. He's a disruptive force in much the same way that Donald Trump is. But odds are, I would say, the Democrats are going to come together behind Hillary in the end. What's going to happen on the Republican side, it's a lot harder to see. And that's what we're going to have to look at as we go down the road here. Professor Kermit Roosevelt, thank you so much for joining us and putting some sense into all this. Let me ask everybody here right now, do you believe that the Republican Party is doing exactly the right thing in delaying and making sure that the president cannot get a candidate through the process. Tell us, we'll talk to you about it right here. Stay with us. The Hardline continues.